हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ईपीजी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर के अनिल कुमार असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इंदिरा गांधी नेशनल ओपन यूनिवर्सिटी न्यू दिल्ली टुडे वी विल डिस्कस द मॉड्यूल रेशियल एलिमेंट्स एमंग द ट्राइब्स फ्रॉम पेपर ट्राइबल कल्चर्स ऑफ इंडिया लेट अस सी व्हाट वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न in this module first this module entitled racial elements among the tribes will help one to know the concept of race history and how human race are developed it will help one to learn the meaning of race and how it should not be confused with people nationality religion and culture etc this module also talks about the different views regarding racial categories whether they are socially constructed or biological biologically defined as the emphasis is on racial elements of the tribals in india this study will broaden one's knowledge on the tribal people of india who form an integral part of the indian subcontinent because most of the past studies on the racial classification of india are based on the physical morphology of the population it can help one to understand and identify the tribals from a scientific approach however it can also be open to further researches on the cultural and social significance of race now the term race mean common descent entered the english in about 1580 the word basically derived from the old french word race and from italian word razza which initially derived from the arabic word ras meaning the head of someone or something latin words genes and arabic word genet meaning clan stock or people and genus meaning birth descent origin stock of family stock or family a greek word genus meaning race kind and gonos meaning birth offspring stock race is a colonial concept or race is a concept it should not be confused with people nationality religion and culture etc the concept of race has a long and complicated history that date back to the time when the european explored the world history has its has it that race was first recognized when the europeans came to america and noticed the native americans initially the term race was associated with language that was used to refer to speakers of a common language and then to denote national affinities by the 17th century it was associated with physical traits phenotypically and from the 19th century onwards race was used to refer to the classification done genetically among different human population that were defined by phenotype however in the 20th century there was 
decline in racial studies due to politicization of this field under the concept of racism. Many scholars are of opinion that racial categories are socially constructed and not biologically defined. For example, Carl Linnaeus, a Swedish naturalist, was among the first to classify human species based on some mental traits. However, most of the anthropologists refuse to believe in the theory that human race are classified, taking into consideration their mental characteristics and one of the most prominent scholar defying this theory was Klingberg who found no relationship between the race and psychology. According to Gunther's in 1927, race shows itself as an individual human group which in turn only produces its life. By individual human group, he meant a human group marking itself off from other human group through its own peculiar combination of bodily and mental characteristics. His explanation on race was based on the determination of five European races and on their skull measurements. Hutton, an American anthropologist, defined race as a great division of mankind, the members of which through individually varying are characterized as a group by certain combinations or morphology and metrical features. Principally, non-adaptive which has which have been derived from their common descent. He recognized three primary races in 1931, namely Cossacoid, Negroid, and Mongolite, which are later modified and Franz Bose precisely studied the physical characteristic of different population and concluded that the cranial capacity of brain size differ widely within the races. This anthropological research work led to finding that there can be no race that is either superior or inferior to the other. The concept of race has a long and complicated history that dates back to the time when the Europeans explored the world. History has it that race was first recognized when the Europeans came to America and noticed the Native Americans. Initially, the term race was associated with language that was used to refer to speakers of a common language and then to denote national affinities. By the 17th century, it was associated with physical traits phenotypically and from the 19th century onwards race was used to refer to the classifications done genetically among different human populations that were defined by phenotype. However, in the 20th century there was a decline in racial studies due to politicization of this field under the concept of racism. Many scholars are of opinion that racial categories are socially constructed and not biologically defined. Carl Linnaeus, a Swedish naturalist, was among the first to classify human species based on some mental traits. However, most of the anthropologists refused to believe in the theory that human races are classified taking into considerations their mental characteristics and one of the most prominent scholar defying this theory was Klingberg who found no relationship between race and psychology. According to 
Gunther's in 1927, race shows itself in an individual human group which in turn only produces its like. By individual human group, he meant a human group marking itself off from other human group through its own peculiar combination of bodily and mental characteristics. His explanation on race was based on the determination of five European races on their skull measurements. Hutton, an American anthropologist, defined race as a great division of mankind, the members of which, through individually varying, are characterized as a group by certain combinations of morphology and metrical features principally non-adaptive which have been derived from their common descent. He recognized three primary races in 1931 namely Cossacoid, Negroid and Mongoloid which was later modified and according to Franz Bose precisely studied the physical characteristics of different population and concluded that the cranial capacity and brain size differ widely within the races. This anthropological research work led to the finding that there can be no race that is either superior or inferior to other. The first attempt to classify human races date back to 1684, where Bernier tried to classify the people he came across on his journey to the old world. Many other scientists such as Blumenbach, 1975, Denny Carr, 1889, Dixon, 1923, etc. classified race based on the physical morphology such as skin, color, hair, hair form, nose form, etc. In the 19th century, attempts were made to change the concept of race from a taxonomic to a biological concept such as using anthropometrics that were invented by Francis Galton and Alphonse Bertillon. In recent time, in the field of anthropology, the studies concerned with physical morphology are somatometry, somatoscopy and some physiological characteristics. Somatometry is a measurement of the human body including face and head, a major tool in the study of human biological variability including morphological variations. Somatoscopy refers to the examination of human body through observation which is also an important tool in studying human variations and similarities. Physiological studies on the other hand include certain traits such as ABO blood grouping, MN blood grouping, RS system etc. Likewise, various other scientists and anthropologists attempted to classify race based on both physical and mental traits at different times. However, three major races have been recognized namely Negroid, Cossacoid and Mongoloid. A fourth race namely Australites has also been considered by anthropologists. These major races have been classified into various other subgroups. There are number of races in the human population each differing from one another. Scientists and scholars are interested in studying the differences and similarities among the various racial groups and the nature of it. Some of the reasons that clearly explain the formation of race are mutation, natural selection, accidental or chance fluctuations, migration, 
isolation, hybridization, sexual and social selection. Since time immemorial, admixtures in the human population have been taking place among the different races, giving rise to racial groups. On the flip side, it is also the reason for extinction or absorption of racial groups. Now we will discuss tribal India scenario. According to Rich et al., the modern Indian population is composed of two genetical divergent and heterogeneous populations who intermixed in ancient time known as ancestral North Indians and the ancestral South Indians. Since this immemorial various ethnic groups have entered the Indian subcontinent making population even more diverse. Many anthropologists are of the view that the Indian population present a mixture of all major races namely Kosakoid, Mongoloid and Negroid. Several prehistoric studies in India through the remains of human skeleton shows the presence of three racial groups namely proto australite Mediterranean and Alpine Armenoid. The tribal communities in India can be classified according to their geography, language, race and economy. India with its diverse culture comprises of many ethnic groups, each of them differing from one another. The tribal population in Indian are an integral part of the Indian civilization that forms a huge percentage of the Indian subcontinent who are scattered all over the country. In fact, according to Richard Lano, all India were tribally organized and that the detribalization began simultaneously within the process of urbanization. According to 2011 census, the tribal community constitute about 8.61% of the total population of the country and cover about 15% of the country's area. Each area, each tribe have their distinct culture, tradition and language. In the history on India, the tribals are referred to as Jana or Jan, Adivasis etc. who differs in their physical appearance, culture, tradition, religion and are isolated from others and live in vague terrains. These tribal communities can be classified according to their geography, language, race and economy. Basically, the tribes in India are divided territorially into three main zones namely northern and eastern zone, central zone and southern zone or south zone. The tribes of these three zones speaking languages and dialects belonging to different speech family. According to Guha, the south Indian tribes have a Negrito origin. The central Indian tribe has proto australite and north northern eastern tribals the Mongolite origin. Many anthropologists are of the view that the Indian population present a mixture of all the major races namely Kosakoid, Mongolite and Negroid. In the past several prehistoric studies in India through the remains of human skeleton shows that there are about three racial groups 
present in the Indian subcontinent, namely Proto Australide, Mediterranean, and Alpine Arminoid. Proto Nordic type is also added by some scholars to the classification. The first racial classification of India was made by Herbert Hope Risley, who classified the population of India into seven times, namely Turco Iranian, Indo Aryan, Saito Dravidian, Aryo Dravidian, Mongolo Dravidian, Mongolide, and Dravidian. Many other scholars, such as Rigdit, Guha, Hadden, Majundar, Sarkar, etc., also attempted to classify the people of India based on scientific knowledge. Apart from the classification of people of India based on scientific knowledge, in India, the tribal communities can be classified according to their geography, language, race, and economy. Basically, the tribes in India are divided territorially into three main zones, namely Northern and Northeast zone, Central zone, and Southern zone. The tribes of these three zones speak languages and dialects belonging to different speech family. According to Guha, the South Indian tribes have a Negrito origin, the Central Indian tribes, the Proto Australide, and North Indian Eastern tribes, the Mongoloid origin. In the Northern and Northeastern zone, places such as Eastern Kashmir and Punjab, Himachal Pradesh, Northern Uttar Pradesh, and the seven northern eastern states constitutes the zone. The northern state states of India have a high percentage of tribal population. The major ethnic group are Mikir from Assam, Oho, Sima, Angami, Lotha, etc. from Nagaland. Garo and Kasi from Meghalaya, Chakma from Tirpura, Abhor and Apatani from Arunachal Pradesh, Lusai from Mizoram, Kuki from Manipur, and parts of Nagaland, etc. The tribals from this zone speak the Tibeto Burman speech family, except for the Khasis who speak the Mon Khmer. Austric speech. They basically belong to the Mongolite racial element. Numerous classification on the racial elements of tribal India based on their physical trait have been made by various anthropologists. This classification of racial elements has been in debate from the very beginning of its study that dates back as early as, as the 19th century when D. Quadrefes made his opinion about the presence of Negroto element in the Indian subcontinent. According to him, they made remarkable contribution towards the substratum of the Dravidian in central tribal group in the country. The first racial classification, as I said above, in India was made by Herbert O. Prisley, who classified the population of India into seven types, namely that is Turco Iranian, Indo Aryan, Saito Dravidian, Aryo Dravidian, Mongolite Dravidian, Mongolite and Dravidian. As this, many scholars such as Exeded, Guha, Hadan, Majundar, Sarkar, etc., also attempted to classify the people of India based on various scientific nature. Classification of racial elements has been in debate since time immemorial. Anthropologists like Lapicu, Lyre, Guha, Hutton, etc. supported the view that certain tribes in India, especially the Central and South Indian tribes belonging to Negrito element. Guha was of the opinion that the Negritos were the original inhabitants of India, while 
Risley believed the Dravidians to be the first comers to India. However, many other anthropologists did not accept the presence of Negrito element in India, although, as Das 1997 has mentioned, one cannot completely rule out the possibility of penetration of Negrito traits into certain parts of Indian population as the Negroid population must have entered the country and came in contact with people from certain parts of the country and as a result admixture must have taken place giving the rise to certain Negrito traits among the population. According to many anthropologists who disagree agreed on the presence of Negrito elements, one reason why they did not accept the other view was perhaps because they felt that many investigators failed to clarify uh, clearly distinguish the type of hair form, a form of racial criteria which defines the Negrito element. Anthropologists like Sarkar and Majundar believed the astrolite elements to be the autotones of India. Various skeletal remains discovered from different parts of India also justify the presence of astrolite element in prehistoric India. Based on the physical characteristic of tribal population in India, A.C. Haddon, Risley, Richted, B.S. Guha and Sarkar attempted to classify them into various racial elements. In all their classification, the Negrito, the proto australide and the Mongoloid are seen to continue constitute the Indian tribal population. The best representatives of this racial element are the tribes in South Indian, namely that is Urali, Kanikar, Muthuvan of Travanskur, Panian of Malabar, Irula of Kurumba and Chalaga of Nilgiri area, Chanchus of Hyderabad, Malachar and Kadar of Cochin. They are also present among the north males of Rajmahal Hill, Pahira of Manbhum, and among various central Indian tribes like Oran, Gon, and Khon. Astroloid elements is characterized by physical features such as short stretcher, dark skin color, dolicephalic head, platyrine nose and wavy hair. Based on physical characteristics of tribal population in India, various anthropologists from India and abroad attempted to classify them into various racial elements some of which may be mentioned as follows. According to A.C. Haddon, some of the tribes in central India namely Bhil, Gon, Oran, Santal etc. are classified under pre-Dravidian racial element. They are characterized by physical features such as dolicephalic head, short stretcher, platyrine nose and dark brown to nearly black skin color. On the other hand, the tribes in Assam belong to Mongolite origin where he observed certain racial elements such as pre dravidian characterized by dolicephalic and platyrine type represented by the Khasi, Kuki, Manipuri and Kachari tribes. Uh, Neocyte elements characterized by dolicephalic and misorine type represented by the Naga tribe, etc. According to H. H. Risley, he also classified the tribals in Assam under Mongolite type characterized by physical features such as broad head, fine to broad nose short to below medium stature, oblique eyes, 
with epicanthic fold, dark with yellowish tinged skin color, scanty face and body hair. On the other hand, the Panias of South India and the Santals of Chota Nagpur, Central India are classified under Dravidian type characteristics by short stature, long head, broad nose, very dark skin color, dark color eyes and hair and plentiful hair that tend to curl. According to Disley, the Dravidians are the true aborigines of India. According to extent classification of human race is based on both physical and cultural factors. According to him, the we did and ancient Indians are known to be the primitive people who live in jungles. Under this division, the Gondi type of represented by tribals such as Zhuang, Bhils, Orons and Gond and the Malid type represented by Kurumbar, Kurumbar and Vedha tribes. The tribal people under these two types are found to have dark brown skin color and curly hair form. As for their cultural trait, the tribes under goaded type shows matriarchal influence, use matok and believes in totemism. The Malid type of represents an ancient culture with some foreign influence among them. The other division made by Exedate is Milanded or Black Indians. Under this, the Southern Milanid, who is represented by Yanadis, who show dark skin color with a matriarchal influence among them. The other type of the Kulid represented by Mundas, Hoes, and Santals, who inhibit the North Deccan forest, showing black brown skin color and culturally shows a strong belief in totems and matriarchal influence. The presence of the Negro tea element in the Indian population was strongly advocated by B. S. Gua. According to him, tribes such as Kadars, Pulayans from Cochin and Ravanskur, Irular and some diminishing tribes with low literacy Great popularly known as the primitive tribes of the Wayanad belong to the Negrito racial element. They found to have small, round, medium and long headed, straight, flat and broad nose, very short to pygmy stretcher, dark brown to dark skin color, woolly hair, bubbleless forehead and smooth supraorbital ridges. On the other hand, tribes such as Chanchus, Kanikar, Khon, Bhil, Santhal, and Orans are classified under proto astrolite element who are characterized by dolicephalic head, markedly platyrine nose with depressed root, short stretcher, dark brown skin color, wavy to curly hair, less developed forehead that are slightly retreating and prominent supraorbital ridges. Further, the Mongolite element comprises of Paleo-Mongolite, Pale-Mongolite and the Tibeto-Mongolite type. The Pale-Mongolite is divided into long-headed type represented by the Seminagas who were present in Assam characterized by medium nose, medium stretcher, prominent cheekbones, dark to light brown skin color, short and flat face and faintly developed supraorbital ridges. The broad headed type is characterized by broad head, round face, dark skin color, medium nose, obliquely set eyes with marked epicanthic fold found among the Chakmas and the Maghas present in the hill tribes of Chittagong. The true representative of this type is the Lepchas of Kalingpong. The Tibeto Mongolite is another element classified by Guha, who, whose true representatives are the Tibetans of Bhutan and Sikkim. 
they are characterized by having broad and massive head long and flat face tall stature medium to long nose oblique eyes with marked epicanthic fold scanty body and facial hair and light brown skin color so students let us summarize what we have learned in this module we have learned about the race concept racial element classification different tribal races in india and abroad and the races that are distributed in india now i will briefly summarize this the concept of race has been a long and complicated history that date back to the time when the european explored the world the history has its it that the race was the first recognized when the europeans came to america and noticed the native americans initially the term race was associated with language by the 20th 17th century it was associated with physical state phenotypically from the 19th century onwards race was associated or used to refer to the classification done genetically among different human populations that were defined by phenotype and in the 20th century there was a decline in racial studies due to politicization and this field under the concept of race racism many scholars are of opinion that racial categories are socially constructed not biologically defined such as call linnaeus while many other refuse to believe in this theory such as klingberg hutton first recognized three primary races in 1931 namely caucasoid negroid and mongoloid which are later modified franz bos concluded that the cranial capacity and brain size differ widely within the races there can be no race that is either superior or inferior to the other a lot of intermixing during the past decades in indian population makes it impossible to have a consider any race in the country that is pure thus as mentioned it is an established fact that the race crossing has been taking place from the prehistoric past and as such there is no so called pure race all are more or less admixture groups based on racial classification propounded by these various scholars in the past it is made that the difficult to decide which of the element should be considered as the original inhabitants of india the closest we can conclude is that the three basic elements namely the negrito the proto australoid and the mongoloid constitute the tribal population in india also as diverse in the indian society is there has been a lot of intermixing during the past decades and there can be no race in the country that is pure thank you